everyone, welcome to the Quality Online Course Series, Getting Students Started. We're going to go through a little bit about how to work the um, interface here in Blackboard Collaborate Ultra. And I've noticed that several of you are already very comfortable with it. Um, Bill is um, has raised his hand, so he might be testing out buttons. Um, but if he does have a question, go ahead and ask it in the text chat area. Um, but we'll move on from now because I know you know how to use this system, Bill. Um, so these icons um, have slightly changed um, due to some upgrades that have been taking place with Ultra. Um, but I think you'll still get the idea. Um, if you open up that Collaborate panel down at the bottom, um, you'll see that um, speech bubble icon, and that's the text chat area. Um, it sounds like everybody can hear me fine now that um, John is is all worked out his issues. Um, oh, <laughs> Bill is, is calling me out on my screen task because it says if you can hear me, raise your hand. So I did. <laughs> Thank you. I appreciate that. That is one of those indicators that um, if folks can't hear you, right, they they not sure um, how to follow the instructions, so you add them onto the screen. Um, John can hear the ding notifications in the session, but not my voice. Oh, interesting. Okay, so I'm I'm trying to think of how I'm going to let him know what to do. Um, so in this case, I want all of my students to be prepared to get started with our session today. So I'm going to add a recommendation into the text chat area. And I'm going to say, John, try logging on again or use a different browser. Uh, pardon me, folks, while I'm helping John out. All right, uh, so hopefully he can resolve some things there. Um, it sounds like um, because everyone else can hear OK, um, hopefully some of these, um, these options that John can try can kind of help him out. Uh, I see that Ismail just joined the session. Um, welcome. I'm so glad you're here. Um, we are having a bit of a text chat in um, the text chat area. So let me know if you're not able to. Um, well, I guess you won't be able to let me know if you haven't found it. So um, open up the bottom arrows in the um, Collaborate Ultra panel. That's a couple arrows in a purple kind of box. Um, and then go ahead and um, click on the speech bubble. And that's the text chat area. And it looks like. Um, John has um, followed my directions and it worked out. So that's awesome. So again, I said I was going to be sort of modeling this practice. Um, and so um, it, it was nice that we sort of did have a, an example there that when students get started in your online course or even in an online synchronous session like this, you want to make sure that they're comfortable with the technology um, it, so that they can really have their full attention on the content and not be sort of bogged down um, with the, the technology. So I'm glad that um, I was able to help you out with that and we're, we seem to be back in business now. Um, so Quality Online Course Series Getting Students Started aligns with Quality Matters Standard number one. And we'll talk about um, what quality 
matters is to NIU and what that's going to mean. But if you are already familiar with that, um, just kind of letting you know that um, that's what it aligns with. So all of these suggestions and um, topics we're going to bring up this afternoon really have to do um, with the quality of matter standards, which is very research based. And so uh, these aren't things that Tracy just thinks is a good idea. Um, these are actually research based and um, important for your students. Um, so again, as we continue getting comfortable with the technology, um, we're going to open up that um, collaborate panel and we're going to be using the text chat area this afternoon. Uh, many of you have already tried it, but I want to give you an opportunity to practice that. So if everyone can just add a um, click on the speech bubble and add a message to the text chat area, just say hello. <laughs> awesome. I, li I like the emoticons. I like that it has that option. It, it just it just works, right? We can tell how you're feeling. <laughs> Although I'm not sure about that emoticon that John has. He he's, um, seems happy but clenching his eyes a little bit at the same time. Um, if you do want to set up your camera and microphone or even add a photo of yourself, you can click on that maybe silhouette that you're seeing down at the bottom um, and um, use that to add a picture of yourself if you happen to have one um, nearby. Um, or you can use the microphone um, to, again if you want to talk um, or click on the camera icon if you want to use your webcam. Um, I, I was talking to Arlene later. We were talking about how she could turn her, her microphone off. Um, you're certainly welcome to turn on these options. Um, it's just that I think um, it's a little easier. Um, we're not sort of um, creating echoes with each other if all the microphones are on. And certainly, um, you know, if you're not comfortable with your webcam, you can shut that off. But again, you can if you'd like to. Um, like any good um, getting started activity, I want to get to know everybody a little bit. And so um, we're going to have a quick getting to know you activity. And um, just add into the text chat area um, your name will show up already. So add your department and maybe your experience teaching online. And while you kind of add those things in, I'm going to introduce myself a little bit more. Um, so again, my name is Tracy Miller, and I'm the Online Teaching Coordinator in Faculty Development Instructional Design Center. And um, just to give you a little bit more about um, me, here are some things up on the screen, um, some information on how to contact me or follow me on Twitter. Um, also have some of my background in academic interests. Um, I also am sharing a little bit more personal information about myself so that you can get to know me a little bit more. Um, one of the things that I like to share with my students is that I actually grew up in New England and so um, one of the things that I like to share, uh, the reasons I like to share that with my students is because if they moved here from a different area or even if they um, have currently been to New England or something, that might be something that we could, we could share and um, talk about. Um, so this is actually, you know, a getting to know you activity, but it's also a way that students can get to know you in an online course. So we have some information coming in here. Arlene's from Public Health um, in programs in the School of Health Studies, a faculty member. Um, we have an associate professor in electrical engineering. I'm so excited that now we have, we have public health and engineering in the same room. 
And now um, Ismail is from the Department of History and will be teaching an online course for the first time this summer. Um, definitely reach out to me um, because if you're teaching this summer, um, we can I can definitely set you up with some strategies um, to help you um, you get started on teaching online. Um, this series, this is the the um, first general standard number one. But the interesting thing about getting students started is um, in some ways you really have to have everything else done before you can do the getting started part. So definitely reach out to me. Um, Christine is in curriculum and instruction um, department. I have not taught online, but I've taken many courses online. And that insight is going to be valuable to you because you'll know at least what you like and what you don't like. I just have a tickle in my throat, so I'm going to turn the microphone off so I don't have to cough. That is one of the benefits of being online. You can turn your microphone off and have a cough. Um, John is from Environmental Studies. And you are not just merely a TA. You are a valued contributor to your department. Um, Sharing something, a connection that we have, John, my bachelor's is in environmental studies, and so I definitely have some interests in that. So um, if you are interested in, in talking um, content, let me know. I, I'd still love to tap back into that stuff. Um, Zoe is with Literacy and Elementary Education, taught several online courses, both synchronous and asynchronous, using several platforms. Um, not using Blackboard. Okay, so maybe um, I definitely have some tips on how you can get students started and um, specifically how it would look in Blackboard. And Bill is in music and teaches piano. Um, all right. Bill, you keep raising your hand. <laughs> Um, and you use a blended style, yes. Yeah. So you're um, using um, a lot of um, technology in your teaching and um, using the advantages of having Blackboard, which absolutely makes sense. Um, and actually, I'm going to hold off on that just for a minute because um, that's a good segue to what I was going to be talking about very soon. Corinne, I see you just joined us. Um, Corinne, we are kind of chatting together in the text chat area. If you look at the bottom of your screen, there's a, a purple, a bottom right hand side purple arrow that will pop open and that will um, allow you to click on the speech bubble, which is the text chat area. So um, you'll start seeing the text come in, um, but you only see the texts from when you're actually in the room. So things will start flowing along. What we've been doing is introducing ourselves in the text chat area, um, the department you're in, and your experience with online teaching. And we were just sharing, we, we come from a very diverse background here, but we also do have some connections. Um, Vensel, uh, Wiesel, I want to make sure I pronounce your name right. So if you write it out phonetically, if I'm really butchering it, I'll try to improve that. Um, has no experience with online teaching. That is OK, because look, you've already had an interest in it, and you, you're joining us this afternoon. So that's great. Way sell. Thank you. That's perfect. <laughs> I feel like I need to write that down. Um, Arlene has some experience, taught an online course about four times, but want to learn how to do it better. Awesome. Well, and that's, we're talking about quality online here. So, um, you know, that means we're going to, we're going to step it up a little bit. All right. And again, welcome everybody. Um, for the new folks, again, if you do want to talk or use your microphone, um, you can go ahead and use that sort of old-fashioned icon down at the bottom to turn on your microphone. Right now, I'm the only one with a microphone on. Um, that way, we're not talking over each other, and we're not necessarily hearing that the dog barking in the background. Um, but I do have some expectations for today, and so let me um, 
inform you of what my workshop etiquette is. Um, raise your hand and ask if you want to ask a question and use your microphone. Um, I know Bill's an expert on using raising his hand. Um, that is actually the icon at the bottom center of the screen that looks sort of like a little figure with the hand up. Um, so again, feel free to do that. Only click the talk when asked to volunteer. Um, we can definitely converse via the chat at any time. Uh, I'm pretty good at monitoring what's going on in the uh, text chat area. And sometimes I'll see a question come in and I'll be able to jump right through it. Other times I might wait for sort of more of a natural pause, um, but I'll definitely get to your questions. A uh, couple fun things we can do. Um, you can use the at sign and a name if you want to reply to a particular person. Maybe somebody has a question and you have a good answer for them. Um, or use the plus one sign if you just simply agree. Um, it's a little bit of text speak that's kind of fun when we're in this environment. And I am okay with it. Uh, when you're talking about how your, your students um, should get started, one of the things you want to do is let them know what your expectations are. And so I am letting you know what my expectations are for the workshop. Um, now here's how I think you can be successful in this workshop and really get the most out of it. And the first thing is to minimize distractions around you. So if you can shut your office door or um, if the dog is happily in the backyard and won't be barking, whatever you can do to minimize the distractions are going to help. Um, instead of taking notes, feel free to um, really focus on the presentation because I will be um, providing you with a recording later. Um, hopefully that means, you know, eyes on, ears on, and um, again, don't worry so much about taking notes unless that helps you incorporate the content. Um, ask questions. Ask questions really um, at any time um, and then share your own thoughts and ideas. Uh, I learn from these workshops every time I do them. I hear about new ideas um, and so I am definitely not the only teacher in this instance. I want to hear from others. My objectives are going to be to explain the importance of introducing a course to students, um, to uh, give you some information on how you can help students feel connected. Um, you want to help the students understand the purpose and the structure of an online course. And we're going to talk a lot about that. Um, and then provide students with essential information to be successful in the online course. Hopefully you've noticed some of these objectives unfold as we've gone through um, our introduction this morning. Again, I kind of um, blew it out of proportion just to kind of overemphasize emphasize, um, you know, how important it is um, to help the whole experience um, in your students to be successful. Um, so I'm going to ask you to enter some information into the text chat area again. Um, so what do you do on the first day of a face-to-face -face course? So everyone should have experience with that, whether it's um, teaching or being a student. What do you do on the first day of a face-to-face -face class? Ismail, if you would like to use your microphone, go ahead. All right, I'm getting some responses in. Can you hear um, me now? I can. Go ahead. Okay, well, for the first day of classes, I usually um, do two things. Uh, provide an overview of what the course entails. Explain the, the modules one by one, course expectations, my office hours, uh, etc. And then I also introduce myself and ask 
student to self-introduce so that you know they can get to know each other in order to relate uh, in the course of the semester. So that's what I usually do. Okay, I figured it out. <laughs> Can everyone hear me? Give me some thumbs up. Okay. Yeah, I think my microphone was um, kicked out when Ismail's was there, but I rebooted it. Okay, so what I was talking about to myself <laughs> was that everyone um, definitely um, you know, kind of figured out those activities that we all do the first day of course. Um, there's introductions, there's some kind of overview of the course, um, there's definitely a review of um, the syllabus and maybe the course policies you have, um, and then there's some kind of um, initial activity um, that get that the happens and, and that can happen in a variety of ways. So here's my big epiphany. Um, online courses are no different. You sort of need to sit back and say, okay, um, what are these important elements that happen in a face-to-face -face course that may seem really natural when you kind of arrive that first day um, in class? Um, now you have to design it into your online course. So the, in order to do that in the best way possible, um, start by looking at the students from the student's perspective. Um, and here's a way that Quality Matters suggests that you um, think about the student's perspective, and they call it the ONE acronym. And that is so um, you remember it, but here's what they're suggesting that Students, when they enter uh, any kind of course, but when they enter an online course, they want to know the what's, when's, why's, and how's. Um, they want to know how the course is structured, how the course is, um, how the course is organized, um, 
when they're going to have to be part of the course, who's going to be teaching it. There's all these things that they want to know about. Um, so those are the questions that you need to design into the course um, to answer for them. They also want to know um, how they can navigate around the course. Where can they find um, their content? Where can they find their quizzes? How can they find out what their grades are? Um, so any kind of information that you can give them on navigating, um, they're definitely thinking about that. And then the final one is how are you going to establish relationships and connections um, for your students and how things fit together. Um, what's the flow of the course? Um, what kind of content le leads into another? But I would also say it has to do with establishing connections and relationships um, between you and your students, which is why those introductions are so important, those getting to start, getting to know you activities that we've already sort of talked about. Um, so what are some of the principles for introducing um, a course to your student? Um, and the first one is that there should be sort of um, some kind of course introduction. Again, it's that um, if you're meeting face to face, you're probably going to tell them a little bit about the course. Um, but because you don't have necessarily your personality right there in front of them, um, you need to have some uh, some goals for how you're going to introduce the course that's going to make it a little bit um, more welcoming for the students. So first get to the students get students to connect and let them know you care. So you care about um, who they are and um, that they are a, a class, a um, cohort of learners at least for this this experience. Um, help the un students understand the purpose and the goals of the course. Um, and I'll, give, I'll definitely give you some ideas on how to explain the purpose. Um, sometimes the purpose seems like, well, the purpose is because they have to take this course, so that's why they're taking it. Um, but the more um, information you can give to them on how this course is important, how it may help them in other aspects of their life, anything like that is um, really helpful for the students. Um, help the students understand the structure and flow. Um, so that's something you want to do, again, in that course introduction really early on. Um, you're going to set expectations for your students, and you're going to help the students to be successful in the course. Um, other things that we've modeled earlier on, but now I'm going to start to show you exactly how you can do that. Okay, how are we going to get students to connect? Um, well, this is what we mean when we talk about getting students to connect. Um, and start to interact with each other, you know, because an online course um, can feel very isolating and very sort of lonely. So we want to make sure from day one that they start feel like that, like they're connecting. Um, and so this visual gives us kind of a good idea of what that means. That there's definitely going to be this two-way communication between. Um, the faculty member and the students, and that the students are going to be able to continually be able to tap in with each other. One of the ways that I think it's important to um, give them a lot of information, because we just went over a lot of things, and we're talking about doing this all at the beginning of the course. One of the great ways to do this is to create a really welcoming and informative page as your course entry. So it's something that the students are going to see the first time they click on the course in Blackboard. Um, so let me just briefly go over some of this information that we have on this sort of sample welcome page. Um, starts with the course description. This could be a description right out of the catalog. It almost gives them that, oh, I'm in the right place um, information there. Um, and then the next is getting started activities, literally numbered so that they know, boom, 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 this is what I need to do. Um, and it, it goes along with the navigation of the course. Um, and again, it gives them the kind of step-by-step -step introductions that they'll need to do um, right away to get comfortable in the environment and to get started um, learning that content. 
Uh, the next one down is the course learning objectives. Um, I think that keeps everyone really focused if we add the course learning objectives here. Um, the students have a very clear idea of what's going to um, happen during the course, um, but also it reminds you of what to really focus in on. Um, the bottom one here is the ADA statement. This is required in all of our syllabi, um, but I really feel like it's important enough to put it um, up front on this welcoming um, page, especially when we talk about letting the students really know that we care. Um, in the second column over here, again, just some quick information that um, they can kind of know that um, more in what the structure of the course is going to be. So I started with some meeting dates, if there is any face-to-face -face meeting dates, whether it be face-to-face -face, um, like here on campus or one of the regional centers, or um, maybe it's going to be more like an online synchronous session, which is the one that I have below. This is just allowing them to kind of um, put things on their calendar early in the course and be able to prepare um, for the course schedule overall. Um, if there's any other technology that they're, you're using, you can add this in here. This is um, just um, a way to tap into a remind tool. Um, so if students want to opt into something like that, or if they even want to maybe follow you um, on social media or something like that, you might be able to add that here. Um, and then some instructor information. Um, I think some of this, um, we, we definitely put it at the top of our syllabus, but it's just so easy to find and it kind of alleviates that stress from the uh, from early on if they see that here. Um, there's also a little bit of expectation in here because you can see that, um, for instance, um, in this example with Stephanie, she said the email is strongly preferred. And so she's letting the students know that she expects them to email her if they have any questions. It's the best way to get a hold of her. Here's a different way you can do a course welcome. Um, this is actually a sample for from a course that our director here in fac faculty development teaches, uh, Jason Rohde. He does um, uh, your instructor area, um, definitely a, kind of a bigger area than just using the con um, contact information area that you'd use in Blackboard. Um, but he also includes a video just kind of welcoming his students to the course. Um, puts a little bit more personality into it. Um, it it kind of has some more movement to it. Um, and it just seems like a really uh, friendly way of um, welcoming his students to the course. Um, also kind of puts um, a person behind it so that it doesn't feel so um, automated as an online course can feel sometimes. Um, this is actually one of the um, ones I do. It's um, in my instructor page, but um, it's a little different. It's just a different take on the one that I did when we started the webinar. It's a little bit more professional. And one of the reasons I wanted to share this with you today is because um, you don't have to do it my way. You don't have to do you know, the introduction like Jason did. Uh, make it your own, but it's just important that you know, students feel connected to you um, when they get started in the course. Um, they'll get to know you more as the course happens, but this is just some uh, techniques that you can use, um, again, to get those students off on the right start from the beginning. Um, but I also let students in this case know what I feel my instructor role is um, in the course and, and kind of my teaching style. And I also let them know a little bit about my communication expectations. So maybe a little bit more than that example where Stephanie uh, mentioned that she likes to be um, emailed. Um, I state in here, you know, my, my response time that students can expect from me. 
Um, also, I suggest that they ask their questions in the question and answer forum um, so that everyone benefits from the answer. Um, similar to what we would do in a face-to-face -face course when we would really try to encourage students um, to ask their questions in class. Um, so just, again, some ideas to um, introduce yourself to your students. Um, create your own um, copy ours too, it's fine. Um, but if we want the students to be able to get to know each other early on, um, we de definitely recommend using a discussion board, uh, getting to start, getting to know you um, icebreaker, like Bill talked about. And the icebreaker can be definitely a little bit more formal than um, more content um, focused discussion boards. But it also helps the students to get comfortable with a discussion board. It helps you get comfortable with a discussion board. So it's a great getting started activity. Uh, the one we have here is um, just kind of a fun one where we have the students um, give three examples of different roles that they play in their lives, different identities, and then maybe a symbol. Um, so it's a little creative, and um, I really find that students enjoy these kind of icebreakers. Um, for my students, I have them do um, two truths and a lie, and then the other students have to guess which the lie is. And so um, that can um, really generate some interesting conversations, um, and they, they really get excited about it. Um, two truths and a lie, fun, yeah. So I have 30 students in my class, and I usually get over 300 um, posts because they all, the rest of the this discussions, they only had to po post it to other people, but one they just like, they just all want to reply to each other. They have a great time. Okay, now let's talk about the purpose and goals of the course. I think this is one. Sometimes when I get questions from faculty, this is one that um, can kind of go unnoticed. So I want to give you some good ideas on how to help your students um, know what the purpose of the course is. Um, and so, you know what? Just put it out there. Put a clear purpose and description of the course. The course description that we talked about earlier that I said you can practically just copy and paste it out of the course catalog. It should be a little bit more. Think about something that um, you um, really feel strongly about with the purpose of this course. Um, you know, does it have um, other outcomes that may take place like a, a, a skill that they're going to have for the rest of their life. Um, let them know that. How does this maybe fit into their sequence? Any information, just really lay it out there and put it somewhere like in the course information area. Um, and I would probably recommend in the course information area, maybe in that um, welcome getting started area, as long as it's not sort of getting um, kind of long. And, um, you know, the longer you make things, the less likely that, you know, they're really going to intently read through the whole thing. Um, another idea is to create a video on what the, um, the purpose of the course is. Um, again, it kind of puts a personality before it. It also helps the students kind of absorb that information a little bit more because they can both um, see the information and hear about it from you. Um, in this case, I have another screenshot of Jason doing one of his videos. Um, and I also have the closed caption visible so that you can see that that is actually what he is talking about, um, that the course is building up upon processes um, that they've already worked on and that they can, um, that in this course they're going to focus on a certain element of it and um, again it just is a different way you can do it um, and something that the students uh, can get to know you a little bit more with. Um, students need to know how the course is going to relate to them. This is st We're still talking about sort of the purpose of the course. What are their goals or purposes for the course? Um, there may be sort of um, structured, a structured purpose or things that you have in your mind that you're sharing with the students. 
but let them think about this early in the course about um, how it's going to relate to them. Maybe they have some of their own personal goals. And so one of the ways you can do that is to um, create another discussion. Um, maybe in this case the discussion is more um, is more content focused or topic focused to get those um, juices going ab about how this course is going to be important to them. Um, in this example here, I have um, a scenario where there's actually three different questions and students just need to pick from one. And so that helps them think about, okay, which one of these questions um, really resonates with me a little bit more um, and then allow them to kind of answer. Um, that way it, it lets you know again a little bit more about them, but you want to make sure that um, that there's some meeting of the minds of, of what the purpose of this course is. So let's transition a little bit and next we're going to talk about the structure and flow of the course. Um, but I am going to pause for just a minute and if anyone would like to share um, what they've done to um, introduce their students to the purpose and um, kind of how they welcome their students to the course. I'd love to hear about it. Add that to the text chat area if you like. Okay, as you're kind of um, adding things in there, if you have anything to share, I'm going to show you a little bit of the way that I think it's um, helpful to your students to explain to them um, what the structure of your course is going to be. And that's to provide them with a comprehensive schedule. Um, there's a, again, there's a lot in this, but it's packed into a small amount of space. So it's something that they can look at early on, uh, really get an idea of what the structure of the course is going to be, but also um, give them, um, you know, just kind of a quick look. I, I often call this actually a quick guide. Um, so you can get just kind of look again. I'm going to just show you some of the examples um, that I've kind of collected. Um, there's dates, there's assignments, there's due dates, um, there's topics. You can see how one topic flows into the other. Arlene is sharing something, so I definitely want to um, call out to it. And by the way, I read a lot of these text chat posts um, for the recording to kind of remind us um, what we were talking about in the text chat. Um, I do have an introduction post with my photo in which I introduce myself and the course. Then I ask each of them to introduce themselves um, in their specialization in public health and why they choose, chose the field. That sounds awesome. That packs a lot, but um, into a small area, which is sort of what we're talking about with this um, schedule. There's a lot, and if students want to go back to that one discussion area um, and find out a lot about a particular student's all right there. Um, I love that idea. Um, here's another look at a um, just a different table format on creating um, a schedule, just kind of um, mixing up the um, the columns a little bit, maybe with a little bit more detail in here. Um, the one thing I like about this is there's also some meeting dates in here. So that's kind of tying in um, maybe those face-to-face -face meetings or synchronous meetings um, that again gives another option for let's put that one on the schedule. Um, sometimes I pull up these quick guides, um, put them somewhere in my office and it keeps me on pace, um, maybe cross them out as each week um, happens and um, I love crossing things out. It's like yes I'm done with it. So um, I think the students do that too. Another way, and really this is my favorite way um, to help the students um, understand the structure of the course, is to create a course tour. 
and I use a screencasting tool. A um, couple of them I like. Um, screencast.com has a Jing tool that um, it's free and um, it kind of lives on your desktop and you can create screenshots and screencasts with them. Um, but for the free version, it's only five minutes. So I also like to use Screencast-O-Matic, which you can um, do a screencast up to 15 minutes. So that comes in handy too. Uh, Corinne has added some information for us. I like the other format visually better. Um, this one is text heavy. Yeah, I think you're talking about the two schedules. I like the schedule guides too. I created a modified one for the last month of the class when so much is going on. I love that idea. I suddenly feel like I need to do a workshop on, you know, how to end your semester online. Because <laughs> that would be great. I love that idea of modifying it the last month of class. Um, so creating your course tour, you can um, just create a screencast. Um, students can hear your voice and they can see what you're clicking on in the screen. Um, the wonderful thing about creating a course tour is, again, it has that movement and that personality that's added to it. Um, but it also is a checkpoint. I think because um, you're doing the course tour after all of your um, design and your development is done and so if you're struggling kind of through the navigation as you're doing the course tour that's sort of your indicator that um, your students might struggle with it um, so you might need to make some tweaks before that course tour goes live. Um, and yeah, again, I added the um, closed captions um, on so that you could see that, yes, that was what I was doing, was literally talking about the course tour. OK, so um, we, are, we are quickly running out of time. So I want to make sure I jump right into some of our ideas on set expectations. But keep those ideas coming in. Um, if, you have, if you have a question or an idea to share, I'd love to hear about it. Um, so one of the things about setting expectations is letting your students know what your policies are. Um, again, might be something that's in your syllabus. I always recommend adding some policies um, into the course maybe as an item so it's easier for the students to find it. Um, it's also a great way for you to kind of point back to it. So if a student has a question in the question and answer dis uh, discussion area about what your lake work policy is, you can refer them to where the policy is in, uh, in the course. Um, and it's just bold and out there, and there shouldn't be any, um, any arguments about that. Um, set your expectations for participation, because that can be a little bit cloudy. What does participation mean in an online course? Um, I often recommend that there is some kind of point value um, for participation. It motivates the students a little bit to actively participate. But what does that mean? And so that's why I like to add some of these items in here um, about what that means to me. Um, in this case, I want them to be enthusiastic in class if there is that in class or a synchronous session, but also in the online discussions. Um, I want them to be scholarly. I want them to um, demonstrate their understanding um, of the readings. I like them to cite their readings. Um, I want them to feel open to asking questions, but also to um, responding to each other in a very civil and constructive manner. Um, and uh, I like this next one. Uh, I found this. Um, in a different course that I was exploring and contributing regularly to this discussion without being dominating, right? That's the face-to-face -face student that's always raising their hand and asking things. You, you want to let them know that even in, in, in the online environment, they may need, need to back down on that a little bit. Um, so again, these are my ideas, something that I found in sharing with you. Um, whatever your ideas are, the important part is that you're sharing those expectations with your students. Um, another way of doing that is to create some sort of web etiquette or discussion board etiquette, um, how you want them to um, kind of 
interact with each other online. Uh, the degree of formality you want them to use, the kind of language you want them to use. Um, is there a professional language that is important to your discipline that you want them to use? Um, so then, of course, you also want um, to model that activity so that they can see that, that yes, this is a professional culture um, and this is the appropriate way to um, kind of interact with each other. So you can find etiquette, web etiquette, discussion board etiquettes online. Find one you like, tweak it to make it your own, um, and then add it into the course. Um, either in each of your discussion boards, in the instructions, or maybe um, in that kind of policy area that you can add to your course. Um, make sure that you um, find ways that your students will know um, early on in the course as you get started how you are going to help them and other helps and supports that they can have. Um, so add a student support area to that left-hand navigation, perhaps, um, and then let the students know early on um, that there's support available to them, maybe before they start to struggle with it. Um, there's also some um, Blackboard help manuals and tutorials for students um, that you can actually find off of our Teaching with Blackboard site pages. Um, and again, to just reduce early on um, their stress because they're going to know how to use those tools. I like creating, uh, linking these um, manuals so that that helps me get started where I'm not spending a lot of time um, kind of um, helping them learn how to use a discussion board because there's a tutorial available for them to show them how to use it. Um, I also use this um, method of tips for success. Um, so. Uh, actually use it in each module, but um, I also put it in as sort of the class whole. Um, here's some things that I think will be helpful and set you in the right direction over this course. So again, just a couple ideas to get students started um, to be successful right from the start. Um, here are some specific steps. Um, one of the things in the arrow up here, create a um, a left-hand navigation area um, that that says something that really indicates that this is where they need to get started. If we create that landing page and it's the first thing they see, that's great, but then as they start to explore and they may get into some other areas, this left-hand navigation is going to redirect them back to where that getting started area is and um, bring them back to, to um, a place they're familiar with, and then they can start the exploration off again. Um, this is also um, a screen that I like to show where it's a good idea to have just a nice, friendly welcome. Um, a little bit about, um, you know, maybe their anxiety here. I talk about you may be taking an online course for the first time, um, how you're going to, this is going to help you. Um, and, you know, just get them off on the right track. Just really friendly, welcoming language. Um, you, can, you can go into the, the stricter language in other areas. The first thing they should see um, should be nice and friendly and welcoming. Um, if you have any sort of prerequisite, um, let them know what that is. Again, it's probably in your syllabus. You can probably put it um, into your Blackboard um, course, but also um, let them know if there's any sort of skill or knowledge they need. Um, Corinne wanted to know, yeah, how did you create the um, two-column visual element? Um, okay, full confession here. I copied it from um, a different environment, and I will I'll be happy to share it with you. Um, it takes some HTML coding, um, and so there's sort of all, you know all these secret codes behind the scene. Um, but if anyone is interested in that, uh, then I can definitely share the HTML code with you, and you can just copy it and paste it into your course, and then of course change all the information to fit your you and your course. 
Um, so um, this course overview um, in here, you know, you think, okay, if I don't have a prerequisite, um, maybe I don't need to put in anything. But it doesn't hurt to kind of let the students know um, what what a little bit more detail about, okay, here's my expectation of what I think you're coming into the course with, and here's how we're going to build on it. Um, so that is a good one to add to the course. Provide any technical requirements. So um, let the students know up front if there's any special software they need. Um, you know, Blackboard, I have in this example, is a pretty basic one. Um, you know, and all of our students have access to it. But again, if there's anything else, if you feel like they need a um, a, a speaker or a microphone or something like that because you're going to have online sessions or going to have them recording a presentation. Again, just let them know that early on so that they can get out there and get the technology that they need. Um, so here I'm going to tie it all back into Quality Matters um, and uh, directly related to the the standard, and in this case, it's specific review standard, um, everything that we've talked about in here. Um, quality online courses help students understand the course, including the purpose, structure, policies, etiquette, and how to get started. And all those numbers you see after the red is specific review standards for quality matters. You hit these points, you're going to um, definitely be uh, meeting those standards for a quality online course. But you also want to help students feel connected to their instructor and their classmates. And you want to inform your students about any prerequisite knowledge, technical skills, and technology tools required to be successful. Um, I will send you out a um, a survey, but I'll also send you out a checklist. And if you just kind of want to go through the checklist and uh, make sure all of those elements are there, um, again, well on your way to having a quality online course um, as it relates to getting your students started. Um, so here are just my favorites. So we covered a lot, but here are the ones that um, are really the ones that jump out for me. Um, to create a welcoming and informative page and to change it to your course entry point. If you're in Blackboard and uh, you go to personalization um, teaching style, so it's kind of a weird, I don't know why they call it teaching style, but you can see that you can change your course entry point. Change it to that welcome page. Um, so again, it's the first thing that they see. After a couple weeks, you can change it back to maybe announcements or something else um, once they're kind of comfortable with that. Um, make sure you introduce the purpose and structure. Create a course tour. I already said that's like my favorite. Um, it doesn't have to be a screenshot. It could be um, like a series of screenshots where you're kind of walking them through that way if you're more comfortable with that. Uh, make sure you introduce yourself. Provide your students with specific steps for getting started. That goes back to that welcome page that Corinne was just talking about, where I have one through five, and it's literally um, do one, two, three, four, five, and that's going to get you started. Um, provide the students with um, ways they can interact with each other early and give them your expectations for how they're going to interact. Um, I start off my um, welcome very friendly. My expectations are usually a little bit stricter, but I want to make sure that they're going to meet those expectations um, so that everything that happens after that is going to um, just be much more organized and go much more smoothly. Um, I hear our chimes going on in the background, so I don't want to take up any more of your time, although I will hang out for questions. Um, but here are just some of the things that we talked about um, this afternoon. And again, my contact information, um, feel free to shoot me a, um, an email, especially you folks that are um, that are teaching this summer or maybe this fall, and we can go over some more strategies, some more strategies 